Joy 99.7 FM. Tonight, government in a desperate attempt to prevent Labour's nationwide strike as its ministers for national security lands and natural resources interior defense and environment are currently locked up in a meeting finalizing plans to combat the galamse menace and we are just on the verge of deploying this river gun as i speak to you a meeting is scheduled at the ministry of defense to cross the teeth and dot the eyes in respect of this issue of river guard sooner rather than later we will have them deployed on, on the major river uh, bodies of our country for them to police the river bodies for them to monitor the river bodies but organized labor say their resolve to strike on Thursday remains unchanged. The government is serious. A simple more temporary moratorium on mining. So we all sit to dialogue. Will be the way to go. But they are talking about things when parliament co- reconvenes. Meanwhile, organized labor's impending strike hits a snag as Ghana Medical Association opts out, explaining they were not consulted earlier. Five people indicated we should join the strike. One abstained. Fifteen said no, we shouldn't join. I would like to take this opportunity to inform all of you. I know the press is here. The Canada Medical Association is not joining the strike. We will not embark on the strike action. All of this and more here on Top Story, brought to you by Telecell Connecting Energies and Holy Inset Size Spray and Coil. Enjoy a holy sleep. Tonight's government is in a desperate attempt to avert a nationwide strike, as declared by organized labor, as it summons ministers involved in the fight against illegal mining to finalize plans to combat the Galamse menace. The ministers for national security, lands and natural resources, interior, defense and environment have been locked up in an emergency meeting to desperately find ways to avoid a nationwide shutdown on Thursday, October 10, by organized labor. The group reaffirmed their decision to protest against the wanton destruction of the environment and river bodies by illegal mining uh, miners following government's failure to meet their demands. Listen to the Secretary General of the Trade Union Congress, Joshua Ansa, announcing the decision at a news conference. The government meeting with August Labour's response. We have concluded as follows. Our strike remains I want to repeat, the strike notice remains unchanged. We have the view that what the government has proposed to do does not adequately address our demands and therefore and therefore our notice of strike notice remains unchanged. Thank you. Well, the government tonight is making frantic efforts to avoid this full-scale strike by labor. In fact, we understand that they are currently uh, still logged up in that particular meeting to devise the best strategy to deal with Galamse and to avoid that particular uh, nationwide strike as declared by organized labor. Now, here is Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, Samuel abu Jinapur, speaking to my colleague, Elton Broby, earlier. I feel that uh, in the circumstances... Uh, uh, this this move was one which will not be detrimental to our efforts at regulating small scale. So essentially, that's what it is. 
a decision has been taken to revoke LI 2462. Uh, this, uh, the fight against illegal mining has been ongoing under this government for the past seven years. <clears throat> Excuse me, I would say that no government has fought this menace as much as Akufuado's government has done. Indeed, <clears throat> we all know that illegal small scale mining has been with us for many years. And when the president gave his inaugural address on 7 January 2017, a greater part of his speech focused on the issue of illegal small scale mining. That definitely presupposes that illegal small scale mining was a major problem at the time he took the oath of office on 7 January 2017. For about six months or so ago, we took the decision that we need to roll out a policy of river gas. In other words, we need to have a dedicated uh, uh, cohort of people, a dedicated um, um, uh, personnel, group of people, personnel, who will patrol and, and, and monitor our river bodies 24-7. And so we began a collaboration with the Ghana Navy where we procured five speed boats and began a very rigorous recruitment process or exercise uh, which resulted in the recruitment of some 300 young men and women. They were trained extensively in how to pilot um, these uh, boats, in how to uh, have body cams, and how to use drones, and so many other components of this policy have now been put together. And we are just on the verge of deploying these river guards. As I speak to you, a meeting is scheduled at the Ministry of Defense today at 12 o'clock to cross the teeth and dot the eyes in respect of this issue of river guard. And we think that the deployment of this river guard will really go a great length at um, helping us monitor the river bodies 24-7, as it were. And this has been work in progress. This is not something that has just come up. This is something that we sought approval from the uh, central government some uh, six or uh, eight months ago. I don't have the exact date with me now. But we've been working very hard at this and ensuring that we screen uh, all the recruits, all the personnel who apply to join this River Guard uh, effort. And they were taken through security training, uh, screening. They were, they were recruited. They were trained. Um, we got the equipment. Um, we, 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 we took the policy and the operational manual, everything together. We are now meeting, as I say, to just um, smoothing the rough edges. And sooner rather than later, we will have them deployed on, on the major river uh, bodies of our country for them to police the river bodies, for them to monitor the river bodies, and for them to be able to communicate as quickly as um, they find any illegal mining activity taking place on the river bodies of our country. As you may have read from the newspapers as well, um, the uh, periodic surgical operation by the Ghana Armed Forces under the rubric of Operation Halt. It's been evaluated again, it's been examined, and the decision has been taken that we're going to have um, uh, we're going to have surgical operations as we've done in the past. So the point I'm making is that, look, this government's commitment um, to the fight against illegal small scale mining has been unfortunate. And I think the government has been, has been uh, absolutely transparent, honest, and, and uh, resolute uh, when it comes to this fight. Look, let, let me be clear that there are challenges. There's no two ways about that because of the complexity of this matter and because of the, the common denominator when it comes to small-scale mining or when it comes to mining generally, which is really gold and money. And therefore, people will want to persist and the cabals will want to outwit um, the system and they want to persevere. But we are also absolutely resolute and determined and we're not going to give up on this fight we're going to get on with it. And as I say, these measures which we have worked on over the period are also going to be rolled out, and we believe that they will make a positive impact. But organized labor has been reacting to this particular pronouncement by the minister, and they say they are unmoved until they take, uh, uh, they see actions on the ground by the government. Professor Rons, for example, is the University of Ghana chairman of uh, or president of UTAC. If you look at all that has been said, there are no you don't even have timelines to them. And so I am surprised that Fatima says she is surprised at the response of labor. The agreement was that go listen and refer to us. They want to listen. They came back to us. And we said, no way. If government is serious 
a simple temporary moratorium on mining. So we all sit to dialogue. Will be the way to go. But you are talking about things when Parliament reconvenes. And uh, when is that? And um, we are going to collaborate uh, with Labour to fight Galante. How? Um, we are going to ask um, that special court be set. And meanwhile, people are dying. People are dying today. So why wouldn't well, you? The special court was one of your own demands. So that we look at the other long-term interventions. Why don't we stop the death now? Then we can talk about other long-winding propagandistic interventions later, too. And I'm surprised, like I said, that they are so saying they are surprised at labor. Hmm. The kind of leadership of labor union today, they are not zombies. Meanwhile, organized labor's planned demonstration against illegal mining is set to hit a setback as medical doctors have opted out of the industrial action. Ghana Medical Association President Dr. Frank Serebo revealed that over half of their council members voted against the decision to join the protest during the Medical Superintendent 22nd Annual General and Scientific Conference uh, in the Central Region. Listen. I think that we should embark on industrial action. This directive, I must say, that GMA had no inputs. We were not caught. I was in the meeting, but had this particular decision. Hopefully, I was expecting that we somebody should have the phone and give me a call to indicate that it's the decision that we have decided. I only saw the notice of the industrial action just as all of you did see. I decided to ignore it, but then it popped up. So I said, there is no harm. After all, we all don't like our say. So if there is an issue that is coming up, up as far as I can say is concerned, we need to address it. So I decided to call each and every individual council member and ask him whether we should join this industrial action or not, or hey, whether we should join this industrial action or not. We have 21 council members. Some representing junior doctors, some representing the dental association, some representing the society of private medical and dental practitioners. When we finished, when I finished telling the results of the opinion of the various council members, five people indicated we should join the strike. One abstained. Fifteen said no, we shouldn't join. But that was on Thursday. So I said, look. If we should issue this out right now, we may deflate the momentum that organized labor has gathered. So let's hope and see if it's Tuesday when it's really to have result. In holding, before I could say that over the weekend, there was a leak from the council platform indicating to the whole world that we have better taken a decision that we're not joining the strike. Since then, there has been a lot of commentaries. Let me take this opportunity to inform all of you that Ghana Medical Association doesn't support Ghana say. We think that there are pragmatic ways of dealing with it. There is no way I can plunge this association into a strike with no end in sight. Because the strike that organized Levi is declaring is indefinite. Again, three weeks from today, we have our annual general conference. You are in a conference as medical superintendents today. If I declare a strike, and even though council has said no, I'm sure all of you have to run back to your various facilities to go and quench the fire that will be rotting there. Let's do more on this by bringing in Dr. Ismail Norman. He is President, Institute for Security, Disaster, and Emergency Studies. Uh, Doc, I'm grateful to you for joining us here. I also have on the line Professor Mahmoud Akudugu, is National President of Utah. Let me start with you, doc, Dr. Norman. Uh, so the government has announced what they, they intend doing. They want to send the military back, plus the river guards to guard the rivers. Does this amount to what Labour is asking for, for the president to declare a state of emergency? No. 
Um, thank you for having me, but this is absolutely Charles' play. I associate with uh, Mr. Hansen and Professor Gampo and the positions that they have taken because the minister of, uh, was saying that since 2017, government has, been, has recognized this problem and has been working on it. If you've been working on it and at the time that you took power in 2017, the capability of the water in Ghana was about 40 percent and it's now 70 percent, then you haven't done anything. And so for to deploy drones and river guards, the Galamseyers are not afraid of publicity, of video, of anybody, witnesses, townspeople, chiefs, anybody. For some, a little boy, young man to stand there and say before a camera that Akufuado can do nothing, can do focal to him, and that they will continue to do the Galamse. Tells you that the, the little optics that they are trying to show is not going to do anything, anything. Also, deploying the military, what is their charge? What is their order? Is their order just to be around just so that we see that government is doing something? If they are not there to shoot to kill, if they are not there to seize and capture, if they are not there to use force, whatever reasonable force that they confront to be able to stop this activity, it is just child's play. Optics to convince Ghanaians that somehow government is doing something. And the meetings that the ministers had today, you can bet your bottom dollar, the, me the, me the meeting is okay, it's totally allowed. And uh, at 10.30 of 2020, the joint meeting of ministers is okay. But it is about state security. They are planning on how they can frustrate this activity. It is not about human security, which this government has failed completely. Water is destroyed. Food supply is contaminated. People are getting sick toxicologically. This government should have done toxicological examination to see the ext extent of the exposure of people in the Galamse areas. I'm from Konongo, and I get upset that they are doing Galamse right on the main road of my town, and this government goes up and down to Kumasi and Accra and does nothing. So, so, does so, nothing. So, 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 Doc, with your experience, what do you think is the best way the government can approach this? If you say this is child's play. The government should tackle the matter as if we are at war, as if we are under attack by terrorist group, because this is equivalent to domestic terrorism. And if somebody had come here, a group of people have come here with AK-47, um, shoulder um, grenade launcher, they would have uh, instructed the soldiers and the police to use guns and warfare to, to demolish and, and, and destroy the enemy. We are tackling it as if these people who are doing the Galam say they care. And the reason why government is not going to take that approach is because a lot of party members are involved in the Galam say business. It finances MPP administration, and so they will not stop it. But Doc, isn't it a fact that if you declare shoot to kill operation, uh, some innocent souls could also fall victim to this. And that's why government in its own wisdom feels that once we've trained people to man river bodies, let's take them there. Once we get the military to also patrol in the forest to get this tackled. I can tell you this. Those who are going to man the river bodies are going to be in cahoots with the galamseyers and they're going to get very rich. If you say that there will be collateral damage, you think there is not already established collateral damage in this country of people that are not galamseyers who are compelled to drink contaminated water, women that are giving birth to children that are deformed at best because of galamse. You think there is no galamse, there is no collateral damage already? We are cowards. We are, that's a cop out. We are cowards. It means that if we are attacked by a terrorist group, we will say that because of collateral damage. We will do nothing. And this is where we are as a nation. We are a spineless group of people. But, but I mean, the ministers met today. And, and the information we have is that 
they, they currently are still in this particular meeting trying to finalize things. Now, it, we don't know the briefing they are giving to the military people. Will we be right to say that because they've not asked them to sh do shoot and kill, and then, and then this intervention by government is, 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 is meaningless? How many prison houses do we have? How many spaces do we have? If they were to even capture, did they, did they uh, deploy them together with vehicles to capture these people and bring them to send them to prison? What is the nature of the deployment? Just to stand there with their weapons, looking good, um, and, and with their fine uniforms, and, and do what? What is the purpose of the deployment? If you send people on a mission, they are not there just to stand around and watch people. They are there to take immediate action. And what action are they going to take? If you don't give them the power to shoot, to kill, even during peacekeeping, soldiers are allowed to defend themselves. So if a Galancea were to discharge a bullet, the rest of the soldiers and the police, they are su supposed to stand there and watch because people will get damaged. This is a nation with no spine, no interest in defending the territorial integrity within the country because if we did, this would have been stopped. And so for the minister to say they are deploring River Guard, that's a joke. The, 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 the drones are a joke. You think they don't know? The Galamsees themselves also have drones, and they use drones to monitor police activities, who is coming, who is going, and so on and so forth. And they've got sophisticated weapons. And so if you give our soldiers and police officers, very cheap weapons, old weapons, two bullets, three bullets, to go and defend and, and stop this is not going to happen. So is this shoot to kill proposal by you a characteristic of a declaration of the state of emergency? If the government is not going to declare a state of emergency, it means that government is not really willing to tackle the matter. And organized labor should never give up. They should go. Let this country implode. Let it be. Because if the government wants to stop the implosion of the country, it will declare a state of emergency. And then you can go after. Mm. Uh, I'm asking whether a declaration of state of emergency also has in it your proposal that we should, we should do shoot to kill. If you were to declare the government, uh, I know that President Akufado would never declare a state of emergency. But if you were to declare a state of emergency, then you should also empower the military and the soldiers and the police officers to also, if you are there, it means that you are ignoring the state of emergency and you should be tackled with whatever force, if that means shooting to mm. kill you, should be. I mean, why are we so cowardly about everything in this country? Mm. Uh, the oh. people will do it very easily the, the, by stopping this menace we can't okay doc hold the line for me let me bring in professor mahmoud akudugu who is national utac president uh prof grateful for joining uh, the the government has stated the things or some of the things they are doing to tackle this um you had the, the deployment of military uh, um, river guards and military to tackle it does this really uh come to answer your your call for a state of emergency. Uh, good evening and good evening to uh, our security aspect and to your listeners. Um, the, the question that I would want to ask is, all this is in an attempt to do what? To stop the destruction of the environment? Is that the case? All that, the, all what they said they want to do, deploying the security and all that. And these security people, the soldiers, the police, and, and water guards, when they go, they are supposed to be looking for who is doing legal small-scale mining and who is doing illegal small-scale mining. And they will drive them away. Is that is that what they are supposed to go and do? That obviously will be their brief. That is the problem. Because there is serious destruction happening on even legal concessions. There's serious discussion going on. And so the point we're making is that, look, put a moratorium on it. Just then, in the meantime, no mining. And everybody's out of that place. Then the security people can go and ensure that nobody is 
doing anything anywhere to destroy the water bodies. Then we are back on our, the drawing table to come out with strategies to encourage and promote responsible and sustainable small-scale mining. That is all we are asking for. How difficult is that to do? Well, well, How difficult is that? Why, why do we want to, you know, push the country to the brink? Just... I mean, I, it's, it's big my imagination. But you, you asked for actions, and the government says, I have listened, I'm moving in to get the river guards to go on the river bodies, I'm getting the military to intervene. Aren't these exactly but, what you were requesting for? Yes, so the request we made, right, the request we made was that, first of all, let's stop mining and prospecting for gold and other minerals in forest reserves, on farmlands, and in the river bodies or the water bodies stop it completely as we did in 2017 we saw the results but when you do that then you can send the military or the security people to enforce to ensure that nobody is doing anything but if you say that okay let's keep going on then the security people their first thing to do is to find out whether this person is doing legal or is doing illegal Mm. Then when the person is doing, having their papers, and we know in Ghana, how are they even going to verify that these papers that the person is doing are genuine? Assuming they are even able to verify that, then they have to now de dedicate time to do the verification, and now the next step is to stop those. It's, it's just going to be ineffective as, as usual as we've known it, and be of no any significant results. Mm. So, so for labor... This does not cut it for you? It, it simply doesn't solve the problem. For us, uh, a complete stop is what is required. All forms of mining in water bodies, in uh, uh, reserve, forest reserves, and in, 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 in farmlands should be halted completely. Then let's go back to assess to see what strategies we can put in place mm. okay. to encourage sustainable and uh, responsible mining. Okay, Prof. It's that is five that we are asking for. It's five fifty eight now. Do you know how your entire membership nationwide are voting? I mean we understand you are voting, so do you know where they are voting towards? Either they support or they, they, they do not? Overwhelming majority of members of the University Teachers Association of Ghana are voting in support of the industrial action. Mm. Do we know the percentages now? Um, uh, so far, we have results from uh, about nine campuses out of 15. And we can tell you that the minimum endorsement is 70%. And we have as far as high as about over 90% endorsing mm. i'm grateful to you Prof, for joining us here uh but do, 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 dr norman so what your what would you want the president to do in the next 30 seconds i mean as we move forward as but, uh, just a moment ago the president should declare a state of national state of emergency and then deploy the soldiers and the police officers the immigration for them to then go and monitor that the state of emergency is mm. being enforced, mm. whilst at the same time putting a team together mm. to develop the strategies to ensure that this doesn't happen. Okay. Every August, we stop mm. fishermen, fisher folks, from fishing. Okay. Okay. We can't even stop Galante for just one month. Dr. Norman, I'm grateful to you for joining us. You're welcome. Uh, this has been Top Story. Coming up next is Newsnight.